Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we're gonna continue our basics of Betaflight series by going over the power and battery tab. This should be a quick one, as there's not much to configure in there. So I'm gonna get my trusty TBS Source 1 plugged in, and let's get it connected to the computer. Once my COM port is available, I'm gonna click on connect. And once the configuration is loaded, I'm going to move over to the power and battery tab. You'll see once we're in here, there isn't a heck of a lot to change. So as always, we're gonna start at the top and work our way down to the bottom. The first two options that we have to change are what type of sensors your quad is using. So if we go to the voltage meter source and we click on the box, we can see we have none on board or an ESC sensor. Also with the current meter source, we have none on board virtual ESC sensor and also MSP sensor OSD slave. So depending on these options, more than likely you're gonna go with onboard, especially for current and voltage sensing. Uh, in some cases on the smaller craft, like the Tiny Whoop, you might use the virtual, or if you have smarter 32-bit uh, ESCs, you might pick the ESC sensor. Uh, but for the most part, you guys are just gonna use your standard uh, current meter source as onboard. This means that your flight controller is what's gonna be figuring this stuff out for you. Next, as far as the battery configuration is concerned, we have a few options we can change. We have minimal cell voltage, maximum cell voltage, and also warning cell voltage. You can set a capacity for your batteries. Say if you're always flying 1300 milliamp batteries, uh, you can set that capacity here and get a warning in your OSD when it's time to land based on the capacity of that battery. Um, but as far as minimum cell voltage goes, this is, I mean, you really don't want to change this here. There's, I don't think a need to. Um, this is the absolute lowest voltage that you're going to want to drain your LiPo to. 3.3 uh, is really kind of pushing it. So, you know, again, this is the absolute minimum. Your maximum cell voltage, this is the highest value in which your battery is going to be charged to. So if you're charging a standard LiPo uh, to say 4.2 volts, leaving this at 4.3 is fine. It's going to give you a little bit of headroom so you don't get a warning. Uh, however, if you're running high voltage batteries or if you're overcharging, you're going to have to increase this number to match well, the voltage you're charging to, uh, essentially to stop your OSD from warning and blinking at you nonstop. Uh, you also have your warning cell voltage. This is to indicate when you should land. I personally don't use any of these warning options. I use my milliamp count and my OSD to help figure that out uh, based on the batteries that I'm flying. Uh, but again, this is all personal preference. Not a lot that you really have to change here, but you can tweak this to meet your own personal needs. Next up is our voltage meter. Uh, if the voltage reading is off, we do have a few options to change. Honestly, if you're dealing with a reputable manufacturer, chances are they're gonna give you some base values for this. I really haven't had to change the divider or the multiplier uh, unless the manufacturer has said so. Really, I found that moving the scale up by you know, maybe one or two points here is going to help you get that voltage reading to be much more accurate. But again, you need to throw a meter on your battery and, you know, go up one click at a time until your OSD is giving you the correct voltage. Same thing with your amp meter. You have an offset on the bottom and you have a scale on the top. Uh, because of the flight controller that I'm using, I'm using a DYSF4. Uh, I just know that I need to set this at 438 and leave my offset at zero. Uh, and this is going to give me pretty close to a proper milliamp reading as I discharge my battery. And on the top right, you see we have another item called power state. This is going to give you some information while you're trying to configure, well, your voltage scale or possibly your amperage meter scale as well. So if you plug in a battery, it'll tell you you have a battery connected. It's going to give you your current voltage. So if you put a meter on that battery, you can then increase or decrease your scale here very easily. Uh, also, it's going to show you the amount of milliamp that you've consumed. Again, if you have a meter on your power wire, you can compare. Uh, same thing here with the amperage as well. Once you've made your changes and you're happy with everything, don't forget to click on save and we're done. That's the power and battery tab. As you can see, the power and battery tab is pretty basic. 
there's only a couple of things in there that you might have to change in order to set either your voltage or current scale correctly. Really, there's no right or wrong answer in there. It's probably going to take a little bit of experimentation to get those numbers where you need them to be. Well, I think it's time to end this video and move on to other things. I've said it a million times, but I'm going to say it again today. And I'm going to ask you guys to check out my sponsor, Hot Dog FPV at hotdogfpv.com. Love those guys. Please buy something from them. Buy my stuff. Buy my swag. Yeah. Buy a hoodie. Buy a t-shirt. Uh, awesome, awesome products. If you guys do pick something up from them, I can guarantee you're not going to be disappointed. That's it. I'm out of here. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. <laughs>